Today's show is brought to you by... This program is made possible by The Checkbook of Mr. Todd Burns and by contributions to our newly launched Patreon by viewers like you. Visit patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour and join our community. Thank you. Entertaining shows with content that spreads information and sparks discourse throughout the community. This is the Pearl Media Network. Hello and welcome to the Homebrew Happy Hour. This is the show where we supply the answers to your homebrewing questions and discuss all things related to craft beer. If you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, visit homebrewhappyhour.com and click on the submit a question link at the top of the page. Or now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. I am your host, Joshua Stubing. Today I am joined by the Director of Operations at homebrewsupply.com, Mr. Lada Joe Ermis. Sir, how are you doing today? Oh my gosh. Dude, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I, I, I kept you muted. Let me try that ah. again, but not editing this out because I'm lazy. Hey, Lydic, how are you doing today? Hey, doing good, doing good. How about yourself, man? Oh, I'm doing, I'm doing okay. Uh, you would think, like, I've, pr- I've done enough of these episodes where I know, like, my body almost goes through the motions as I'm doing it. Like, mute this, here, hit this button on this control. Subconsciously, yeah. Subconsciously, yeah. but... I haven't trained myself to unmute you guys. I did every time, especially when it's a one-on-one interview. Like I did the last one-on-one was with Tyler Sadler. I don't know if you caught that one. Yeah, yeah, I watched that. Sure. What a good sport. She was great. But I think I muted her at the beginning. Uh, while we were talking small talk at the beginning, I was like, nothing ever goes wrong on these episodes. I'm really good at this. And then I just made an idiot of myself. I did that with Kenny Hyman, the brewer of Seville. Like every time he's been on the show, I've done it with... <laughs> Uh, Jason Chalifor from Munson. I've done it with Todd before. It's, oh, it happens. Yeah. But that's not always an accident with Todd. Like <laughs> that's where that's where I like uh, when I mute him. You don't normally hear me apologize after the fact. <laughs> with you Did guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like you, you know, he usually. And I also don't give him camera time because he's doing the oh, during the whole dancing thing. <laughs> and he thinks because on his end, y'all don't get to see how it's actually being produced. Sure. You just he see, thinks he's, yeah. yeah. So he just sees himself Making on the everybody screen. laugh. Yeah, he's like, oh, <laughs> look at my attention. Oh, okay. I do, though. I really appreciate you taking the time uh, out of your busy day to, to do the show with me. Um, yeah, I, of course. I, I know you say, of course. I'm just saying, I, as like... You and Todd and James, like the staples that I have on the show, and when some things fall between the cracks, like Todd, um, he's doing all those recipes right now, and yep. and then he has like a follow up tomorrow. To, we're recording this a day early. It's Wednesday, the sixteenth of October. We usually record on the day we publish on Thursdays, but um, I'm coming up there actually tomorrow yeah. and Friday. Just a party. Todd's not going to be there. I thought maybe we could just. Oh, is he? Is he going out of town or something? No. He well, he tomorrow afternoon is his follow up oh. for his neck oh, with the gotcha. surgeon. So he's going to be tied up the second half of the day at least. Exactly. Yeah, and th- he'll be there all day Friday, but but Thursday he'll be out the majority of the day. Nice. And, his party. I know. <laughs> that's what I would say. And that's actually I prefer to be there like these kinds of circumstances because believe it or not, I'm really productive when I'm up there, especially. Like when I have something I have to do up there and we're not distracted by just meeting all day. Yeah, no, it can. It's crazy how we meet for a couple items to, you know, kind of just get on the same page and it turns into, you know, three hours of us trying to figure out the, the world. So Exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah. And it's all, it all ends up being good. Sure. It's just oh, like yeah. when he it's also helpful, but it, it just, they, they tend to, yeah, digress sometimes, you know, it's, it, yeah, it's one of those things that uh, that's why everybody complains about company meetings because they can turn into, you know, three hour long, just bore snooze fests. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, they're the ones that we have are very helpful. Yeah, right? exactly. And Todd, Todd's a guy, he, he's like old school where he prefers to do business in person. Face to face. Yeah. And so like, if he can think of when I'm up there, cause I don't just come up there to meet with Todd. I come up there for like photos and, and recording videos and doing stuff. Stuff that's just easier sure. to do in person. But if he has anything on his mind, like, oh, I want to talk to Josh about this, he won't say, it can wait till he's home tomorrow and, and on the phone. Shoot him he's like, yeah, like, he's like, I'm <laughs> going to do it right now. Hey, Josh, 
come to my office. Well, I'm in the middle of something. I'm writing your chats. Oh, okay. <laughs> but anyway, so it'll it'll this will be a fun trip. I'm actually looking forward to it. The weather has been phenomenal down here. I'm assuming it's even better up there because y'all typically are like three or four degrees cooler. Than- yeah, and usually a little drier too, which is nice, uh, especially when for the heat. But um, yeah, it's been nice. We we had a a real nice cold front come through and it dropped to like in between fifties and sixties for, for a couple days, but then over the weekend it started warming back up. And I mean, it's still nice. It's like, you know, in between seventies and eighties. So it's, it's pretty hard to complain. Yeah. I, um, I have my, my sweat rags here cause I was determined <laughs> it, it, I'm wearing my, my beautiful. I see that. Happy happy. Let me stand looking. up for the camera. Look, the sweatshirts have come in friends. We've, we've sold a, uh, more than I thought we would of these nice. through our merch store. It says der beste podcast aller Zeiten. Which is That's the best awesome. podcast yeah, I'm gonna ever. Have to, I'm going to have to buy one of those. Those are sweet. Don't buy it. I'll get you one for Christmas. Don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, yeah, there, <laughs> there we go. We'll call, I'll do. Yeah. that uh, Man, I am so narcissistic. That's going to be my company Christmas presents. It's just like the <laughs> podcast swag. We, we're using Teespring, and I'd never used them before, uh, mm-hmm. and I'd never ordered our own stuff. We, we've been selling merch for like five months. And by selling merch, I mean we have merch listed on a website that every now and then it sells. Yeah. Uh, and this was the first time I go, I'm going to design something that I also want to wear, not just the podcast in Sydney or whatever. And it came in really quick. And I have to admit, like I'd never ordered from Teespring before. The quality is really good for what you're paying. Yeah. It's yeah, not expensive. Hear. And they'll do like one-offs. The hardest thing about doing merch is You've keeping inventory. A hundred of them or something. To, yeah. For them I mean, to... you know, because we, like, yeah. you do it with homebrew supply glassware. Or or whatever you can't just go. Oh, we sold one. Let's drop ship it from them. You have to order a 144 minimum. Yeah, and exactly. whatever that costs, and then keep inventory. And with the podcast, Todd has he likes the idea of this being self sufficient, but he doesn't like the idea of adding to our plate in regards to inventory and all this stuff. And so, sure. and I didn't either. When he was like, "Okay, you're totally in charge of this," I said, "I'm going to pick a platform that will basically manage all that for us," and then. You know, the margins actually aren't bad. I think we end up getting like 50% of whatever. So if it, this sold for like 30 bucks, I think we get 15 bucks out of it. That's not too bad at not all. Not bad. And, they, and they, they, you're not stocking them. They're shipping from that, directly from Spring. That's Tech. correct. And it's like nice. a five, it's like a seven day turnaround. Like I, if you order today, it gets printed by, you know, Friday mm-hmm. uh, and, and, shipped, and then shipped yeah. to you like on Tuesday of next week or whatever. Yeah, so. that's not bad at all. It's really that's better than wish.com. I'll tell you that. Oh, I've heard horror <laughs> stories about wish. <laughs> I've never ordered from there, but yeah, it's just, they always <laughs> advertise the weirdest things. And then, yeah, I've, I've heard horror stories. It's like four weeks later. It finally, yeah, four up. weeks later. And it was like, you thought you were ordering a spring dress for your wife and she gets a handkerchief <laughs> uh, of the same <laughs> yeah. pattern. And like, right. cause they're, they're out of China. Right. So I don't think you have a lot of, uh, Sub- customer support options. Repercut- yeah, exactly. Exactly. But anyway, we are I'm not excited like about the beer. I saw a big box of beer in then Todd's office with your name all over it. So I'm excited to to see what's in there. I'm you glad are, you already know. I'm glad it's still there. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> Poor James. I think he thinks I don't trust anybody up there, but only because uh we've had a handful of listeners ship beer to us. And and by us, I mean it literally you, me, Todd, and, and James. And uh, Todd, his warehouse crew, our warehouse crew, I love them to death, but they just don't have boundaries. They just open everything that comes in. It doesn't matter whose name is on it. And and one time uh, uh, last week or two weeks ago, no, last week, a listener uh, messaged me through Instagram and said, hey, it, my tracking said your beer arrived. Did you get it? I was like, oh, probably. Let me call. And I called and Fred was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then like Nancy was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, no. And so like, James, where, what is going on? And he was like, we have your beer. Chill out, dude. I was like, oh, okay. So you have the beer. He's like, yes, we have the beer. Shut up. And then the next day. Wrote your name all over yeah, it. T- yeah. yeah, Todd. Yes, the next day, Todd was supposed to go to the office and he just didn't. I don't know if his neck was hurting or something. But I called James. Just want to make sure that Todd takes that beer home. He's going to get the beer, Josh. And I was like, I'm sorry. I know I've come across as a crazy person. I just, I feel bad if these people are sending us beer 
and, yeah. and then I can't don't get to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah that's not just not get to enjoy it, but I won't have any input. They'll be like, what'd right. you think of that beer? I don't know. Let me ask my warehouse manager. Fred, Fred <laughs> drank it. Let me guess, yeah, what thought. And now I'm throwing them under the bus. They would never do that. It's just sometimes stuff gets misplaced. Sure. Uh, and I'll yeah. leave it at that. It, we got a we got a big warehouse with nooks and crannies. It's easy for stuff to get put I'll, somewhere. And that's what about. I was going to say. It, yeah. I legitimately don't think people were going to take it and drink it as much as, oh, I'll put it in like this the obscure fridge in the corner of the warehouse yeah. and forget where we put it. And no one's yeah. going to look there because people forget there's a fridge there anyway. Or like, sure. like you said, sure. a lot of nuts and crannies, but the, the weather uh, talking about brood, I was, I was going to bring up brew days. I know uh-huh. yeah. uh, y'all, I don't know if you have anything cooking. You have already taken the brown ale that we brewed and kegged it, or what's the status on y'all's brown ale? Cause we're kegging it this coming weekend. Um, no. So the one, the two that we have here are in secondary now. Okay. Um, we will probably keg them either this coming weekend, um, or maybe next it, uh, Todd, Todd actually transferred or he had his brother help him transfer them to secondary. And, um, he said they smell, they look, and they, they taste great. So I'm excited. I'm actually thinking about putting, um, like a, not a lot, just a, just a tiny amount of coffee in my keg and, and racking it on top of that coffee. Um, we'll see how it turns out. Dang. Have you done that before? No, I've, I haven't. I've, I've added coffee to a beer before, but it was, uh, I didn't add it like as whole ground or like ground. I just made a little bit of cold brew coffee and then, and then mixed it in with the beer. Uh, and it, and it turned out well. Uh, but yeah, I'm interested to see, this seems a little bit easier to do and, um, we'll see how it turns out. That'll be real interesting. Yeah. You have to document it. Cause I know. Uh, a lot of questions that come in, and, and we've taken them on the show before. A lot of questions come in about you, like experimenting with coffee in in various forms. Like, hey, <laughs> should I dry hop beans? Should I just pour it, literally blend it with pre brewed cold brew coffee? Uh, right. Even even the gas options of like, hey, I did this coffee porter. What do you think about me serving it or? or carving it, uh, and serving on nitro or mm-hmm. there's a yep. lot of options. If you, do you, is everything else going to be the same besides just the coffee edition or is, I think so. Yeah. I think everything else, I'm just going to add like a, and it's like going to be probably half the amount that I would do for like a porter or a stout, you know, cause it is, it is not quite as multi as, as, and, and complex as something like that. So I think I don't want to overpower it. You know, I want to do maybe half the normal amount that you would add for like, again, for a stout or, or a porter. And just so it, just a faint hint of, of that coffee. That'll be interesting. Yeah, uh, especially because be it did. I think Todd agreed with me though. I took a bucket home to me and my dad to ferment it. And then we put it in secondary about a week ago. Uh, it was dry in a good way. I liked it. It came out, yeah. it came out dry. Is that coffee? Do, do you expect it to affect that dryness drastically, or is it just going to be adding flavors on top of the, the body of the beer? Yeah. It's not going to have any sugar input, so it's not going to sweeten it up any. Um, it's basically just going to be a, just a tiny aroma and maybe a small hint of flavor of, of coffee to kind of blend in with the, with the malty, you know, um, brown ale that it is. Yeah. yeah. So Folgers instant is what we're talking about. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, th- that's one of the nice things about the coffee we make up here is all c- from whole, whole, uh, kernel whole beans and uh, we we grind it up ourselves and then make our coffee for the day so i'm just gonna you know maybe like i don't even know how much yet i haven't haven't f- calculated that but just you know maybe like a little like a half scoop and grind it up maybe not even grind it i, I, I haven't even figured that out i may just leave them whole put them in a sanitized muslin bag and then throw that in the keg and it rack on top of it dude that is that is exciting i i wish i had more uh, what's the nicer way of saying cojones? I wish I had the determination <laughs> to experiment just because, I mean, what's worst case? You're going to have a stronger coffee taste than you wanted, but it's right. going to still be good. Like, sure. The, the, what, yeah, I don't think it'll ruin it. That's what know? I mean. You there is no worst. Little... At this stage of it, there is no worst case that's detrimental, right? I mean, yeah, there's, it's going to be hard unless you almost try to <laughs> screw it up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, you're not going to, it's going to be hard to, uh, you know, the, the the biggest issue you can probably run into is oxidizing it while you're trying to get it into the keg. If you somehow shake it up and disturb it and introduce a bunch of oxygen before as you're kegging it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, just adding a small amount of flavor, if whether it's a fruit or a, uh, uh, I guess we'll get to that a little bit later. But, you know, so yeah, I don't think it's going to, um, I don't think I really have a chance to 
really kind of make it undrinkable by adding a, a small amount of coffee. So I'm not too worried. Nice. I almost said challenge accepted when you said you really have to try to mess it up because <laughs> I could probably mess up that brown ale. Um, moving on. Oh, real quick. I did want to think I've been seeing, we've been getting tagged a bunch in people's Kolsch photos that on, on Instagram, they'll po- post a Kolsch and have some like nice snarky comment about like, Hey, Josh, screw the haters Kolsch for life. Nice. I want to make that as a thing from now on. Like I, I can't send everyone Todd's money every time that you do something that makes me smile, but I'm getting there where I want to do that. Uh, keep tagging me. I love it. It's annoying the hell out of Todd. Cause every time y'all tag me or, or the podcast in one of your photos of a Kolsch, I send it to Todd immediately <laughs> screenshot it and text him and go, Hey, look at this. A Kolsch army is a Bruin. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I like so, that. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. With that, I bet that would really irritate Todd if we could get, Hashtag Kolsch trending number one. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even if I had to lie and fudge it and screenshot, like, like inspect and change. Exactly. Yeah, change. Totally make it. Cause yeah, no, it, I, I add, uh, here's a little, uh, Easter egg on everything that I do hashtags for on our podcast, Instagram, I will sneak in the hashtag Kolsch in nice. there somewhere. Uh, someone told me like, Oh yeah, just add all these popular look, social media stuff. As much as I like to say I understand it, at the end of the day, I still don't understand it because like, I'll add some hashtags that will do well in some situations, and that same hashtag on another post will not do well. And by yeah. well, I mean just getting eyes on it because the other right. only way to get eyes on content is paying these platforms to, to push them. And yeah. it's not cheap, man. No, no. It's yeah. cheap. And it's sometimes it's just like it's hard to know when it's going to be effective. Like, you know, if you're going to push something, is it – really something that people will receive well or you know is it going to be worth it to pay to to get this to people's eyes you know exactly yeah it's all yeah just and it's ever evolving too it's such a new technology that it's just continuously evolving so it's hard to it's hard to keep up even when you think you got uh, as soon as you understand it they change the algorithms and they're like <laughs> yeah. ah got you. you you thought you knew I miss the days when you would just spam a web page, like at the bottom, it would just have a ton of meta words that were visible to the end user. You'd be like, what are all these? And it turns out, well, my GeoCities website wouldn't have been found unless I added all these different (laughs) words at the bottom of every page. Why can't we go back to that? Um, No, I know why. Uh, And then real quick, before we get into the meat and potatoes of this episode... Y'all heard the bumper at the top of the show. I do want to remind you that ultimately these episodes are brought to you. If you're watching, I'm pointing at you. If you're listening, I'm speaking to you. Uh, Consider joining our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour. We've got a ton of perks Uh, this month. Our featured recipe, no surprise, is a Kolsch. Uh, James and I came to that conclusion real quick because we thought it was the we had to launch our brewer club kind of monthly Rewards. day with yeah. with this Kolsch. We thought that it was the most appropriate. It's one of the recipes I'm super proud of, and I didn't even make the recipe. It was James's, but it's hard to mess up. Uh, people who are subscribed at that tier can do all grain or extract, and it's an amazing turnout either way. It's a very straightforward beer, and, and there's not a whole – like it's a good one to start off with because a lot of our patrons are also newer brewers. Uh, and the handful of people at that tier are one of them's actually he is in the process of switching from Edstrat to all grain. So like that, it was a good beer for our audience. You know what I mean? If we were yeah. like some of those other shows, uh, like Milk the Funk has a huge community. I, I don't know if you're familiar with Milk the Funk. They they're all about like you know sour beers, farmhouse, and all that. That the implication is you're probably a little more understanding of the brewing process when you're into those styles. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. Yeah, probably. <laughs> well, I mean, that's another good thing about the Kolsch in general. It's, it's a, it's kind of like a blonde ale. You can take that recipe. And if, if you're not in the mood to just drink a regular Kolsch or brew a regular Kolsch, you can do whatever you want with it. You can fruit it. You can sour it. You know, you can really kind of tinker with it. If you're more advanced and um, you know, again, don't want, don't want just a run of the mill Kolsch or a true to style Kolsch. You, you know, you can always make it your own. Exactly. And that, that's, uh, you took the words out of my mouth. I was just saying, I get tagged in photos of people that are like orange coriander Kolsch or one was like a cinnamon something something pumpkin spice Kolsch and, nice. and you know the purest in Germany who are rolling in their graves sure. just don't understand like uh, the American ingenuity that we're, <laughs> but, but like Kolsch is a recipe that lends itself well to a bunch of other stuff like you said yeah it, exactly it, so yeah uh, hashtag sorry not sorry but also 
patrons have access to an exclusive Facebook group where we are this month. Our first live Q&A is with Lorena Evans, our friend of, of the show uh, from Brewer's Friend. We got to hang out with her. It's always fun when we hang out with her, especially at HomebrewCon. And she's uh, she knows her stuff so well. She's legitimately the smartest brewer I've met. And I've met a bunch of brewers. She just... And she's she's very open to sharing it. And so I'm super excited about the Q&A because you can throw any question at her. Like in the Facebook group and to the patron list, I, I said, submit your questions early if you'd like to or if you can't attend, but you're going to watch the replay. But don't limit it. Like you can literally have uh, recipe creation questions, water profile questions, fermenting with extra other ingredients, non-traditional ingredients questions. Uh, adding flavors to your beer. If you even want to ask about kombucha or sparkling water or what, like is sauerkraut. there sour like, I mean, she, she is. I couldn't think of a better person for that Q and A uh, interview. Like, I mean that that is that is perfect. Yeah, I haven't uh, ever brewed with. Well, I, I don't think I've ever brewed with somebody as knowledgeable and and like you said, willing to just spill it out there for you uh, as her. And it's just like. I remember the first time that she came down to San Marcos when we brewed uh, over at our warehouse and uh, we started kind of picking at her brain. And then it got to a point where everything she was just saying and, and kind of going, talking about was just over all of our heads. And we were just like, okay, we need to back up. Like <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's getting too real. <laughs> yeah. I've told her because she likes doing the show and I've told her I'd have you on every week if you would. Hell, you can take my spot. <laughs> if you want. And, and I'm only kind of joking. Like she, she, she needs her own show. Brewer's friend guys, y'all need to make a podcast and Lorena needs to host it. And then when we lose our whole audience to her, maybe they'll hire me. I don't know. <laughs> but yes, that's October 25th. That's a Friday at 6 PM. Uh, if you're a member at any level of the, of our, so eat from $1 up to $50, you can, you can come watch this I don't know if every level says that, but I'm telling you right now, keep me at my word. I will add you to the Facebook group no matter what level you're at, and that's where we're going to be showing the, the live Q&A. So. Uh, and then our giveaway for this month is one of the Keg Connection Fizz Kit Soda Carbonating Bundles. So that's everything you need besides a keg uh, to and, and a CO2 cylinder to uh, make your own home soda. You could carbonate juice, carbonate anything. You've seen them, those carbonating caps. Uh, Todd always... I know they're safe. I, I know that they are functionally secure. They've been tested. They've been on the market a while. But every time we use them, I can't lie. I get so nervous with Todd, like, shaking up the, the two liter. And he's like, oh, yeah. and holding it up to his head. He's like, <laughs> it's getting a little tight. And then doing it. I, I walk to the other room and he'll be like, oh, you don't, you don't like this? I'm like, ah. <laughs> just, I know it's safe. Just. Okay. But yeah, he, yeah, I've always wondered like, cause you know, some, some of the soda bottles that you get are thinner plastic than others. And it's like, I don't know if you should be searching for the thicker ones that, you know, may have come with carbonated water. The answer is yes. Real juice. quick. Yeah. <laughs> the answer, if you can get the, like, and even the, the carbonated, the, the carbonating cap instructions even say that. Thank God. Okay. Yeah. yeah it, good. it totally says like, cause I guess you're right. Newer bottles are, are thin layered especially like the nestle like pure life bottle those are like and i i i get it like you know why make something that's going to pollute with more plastic if it's not yeah. necessary but like uh it just doesn't necessarily may not be the best fit for that application exactly yeah, yeah. and we actually have a video coming out soon uh when the giveaway is done i'll, I'll publish the video on using it uh, th these kinds of things are perfect f excuses for making these types of videos so that we can like, Hey, we're going to yeah. give you this thing. We want to make sure 100% you know how to use it and use it safely. Uh, we also have a video coming out for fixing or self replacing the tap right bonnet, uh, because it doesn't happen frequently. And if you buy it through homebrew supply or cat connection, you get a two year warranty. And I know you guys will replace it for them, but not everyone has the time to send it back to you. I was just going to say, and that's one of the things it's like, I, I, if, if it were me and I bought one as a customer, I would try and fix it myself because, um, we, we will, we will repair it for you. You ship it back to us, but then, you know, there may be a, a, a few days where you're going to be without a regulator, but again, you know, you don't pay for shipping. You don't pay for the replacement parts. Uh, we do get it all taken care of, repaired and shipped back at no cost to you. But, um, again, you, you know, if you've got a beer that you need to keg or you just kegged and you don't can't afford for it to be, uh, 
without CO2, then yeah, it can be a little bit of an inconvenience. Yeah. And it is not as difficult as it may seem. And what we're all about, and Todd has always been about this since I've known the guy, is just demystifying things that are initially intimidating. But once you kind of unveil, take down the curtain, you realize, oh, I can do this. It's not, yeah, yeah. totally. I mean, that's the it's story not, of my life with brewing. <laughs> cracking open an HDTV and, and, you know, replacing parts in there. It's it, a, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So that, that's the next video coming out soon. And then I just realized. I have your footage of of the beer glass that I never published, and that's publishing this oh, week too. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I just, I'd forgotten about that. One. I forgot about it too. All that stuff with Esther and, and all that stuff uh, just totally clouded my mind, and I was going through a memory card to wipe for this come upcoming trip, and I was like, "What's yeah. Joe doing on that video there?" Oh yeah, we <laughs> recorded the stuff about a uh, dirty beer glass, uh, yeah. which comes up a lot. So I'm I'm very excited to publish that. Anyway. Enough small talk, my friend. I apologize. Let's get into these questions. Question number one came from David, who used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. David wrote in, I started brewing about 10 months ago and also started growing hops in May. About a month ago, I wanted to brew a wet hopped beer with the hops I grew this summer. So I took a brown ale kit that I had picked up and hijacked the LME from the kit for the wet hopped brew. I still have the specialty grains and hops for that brown ale. While the beer was fermenting, I bought equipment to move into all grain, and I'm anxious to get started. Can I use the specialty grains from the extract recipe in an all grain recipe? Do the ratios for those uh, specialty grains remain the same between extract and all grain? Would I put the specialty grains into the mash instead of steeping them? I assume I can replace the elemi with grain that I mash myself, but I'm not sure which grain would produce closest to light elemi. Would it be two row? Thanks for the help. Love the show. Keep up the good work. Cheers, David. That is a great question because we have customers who will buy extract kits when they go on sale. Like right now at Homebrew Supply, 20% off. Some people buy two or three at a time because 20% is a good chunk of change, especially if the shipping is only going to be nine bucks regardless of one recipe or 10 recipes. And then they maybe find, oh, this recipe hasn't gone bad, but I'm going up to all grain. I don't want to just waste this recipe. I guess I'll do another extract. What do you have for people like that who – is there some crossover uh, abilities when you have ingredients for an extract and you want to do an all grain? Uh, yeah, big time. So, um, most of your assumptions are, are right on point, um, uh, David. So yeah, I know for the, the majority of the recipes that we, um, have created and have available on homebrew supply. And I would say probably 90% plus, if not all of them, the extract version, um, it copies almost the exact same specialty grain bill and the only thing that really changes is, like you mentioned, you're going to be uh, substituting the base malt for an extract, either DME or LME. So if you did uh, still, if you do still have those specialty grains for that brown ale and the hops, you can use those in combination with um, a certain amount of of just base malt. Two row would work, pale two row or pale ale malt. Um, if it's a brown ale, I would probably suggest Maris Otter. Um, it's a tiny bit darker. I mean, we're talking about like. 3.5 Lovey Bond versus like 1.8 or 3. So there's not much, much more color, but you will get a little bit more of a to, uh, like a toasty, malty, biscuity, which lends itself a little better to like a brown ale. Um, so that would be my suggestion. And if I had to, if you're doing a five gallon batch and I had to just guess a number, it would say between eight to 10 pounds of that base malt should, should be plenty. And that should put you, you know, around the 5% range uh, ABV wise. So yeah, that would, that, sh that should work just fine. You shouldn't have any issues. And yeah, sometimes we even have customers who order an extract recipe when they intended to order all grain or vice versa. And unfortunately, most of the time it's really hard for us to, we, we, we typically don't do returns on perishable goods. Um, so a lot of times if somebody gets all grain and they meant to order extract, you know, we kind of coach them through the brew in a bag process to try and get them helped out. And uh, I've heard a lot of people call back and say, you know, now that I did it this way, I just, I'm, I'm moving up to all grain, you know? So, yeah. so that's one thing, but it'll happen the other way too. Sometimes if they, if they order extract and they need all grain and we can, um, if they really want to brew it all grain, we can just sell them the, a little bit of base malt and they can use the same specialty grains. So, and hops. So, um, yeah, it, that 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 works well, and you sh really shouldn't notice any issues. 
Um, I don't know where you got the recipe, but if it is from us, what you could do is pull up the all grain and extract side by side and look at those specialty grains and compare them. If you are, you know, short a pound of chocolate malt, for example, um, I don't know why it would be different, but, uh, then you can look at just ordering an extra pound of chocolate malt to kind of make up that difference. Um, that would be more of the case along if you're getting like a dark LME or Amber LME, a lot of times companies will substitute specialty grains because the color has already been added to that, that extract. Um, whereas most of the time we're going to send you light or Pilsen or extra light DME. And then most of your color and flavor is going to come from actually using real specialty grains. So I know people really like, and I, I've been telling Todd a, a feature that for cat connection he should have. And I think he is starting to do it finally is it embedding those recipe builds uh, and the instruction sheets into the product description. Cause mm-hmm. that makes it, you would not believe how many people will write in or you would, because you also see them on like the Facebook page or, or emails. And they like just the convenience of being able to preview what they're getting into before buying. Right. Oh, it's right. huge. And like you said, comparing if I accidentally bought the all grain because it was a lot cheaper than the extract version, but mm-hmm. I actually realized, Oh crap, I need the extract because the equipment I have, um, yeah, you, you can, can see. I, oh, I just need to get five pounds of DME. Exactly. Or, yeah. yeah. Like that, it, yeah. It, it, to stretch out this question because I do that with questions. If you find yourself with extra LME, like in his case, what are you going to do with it? Are you just going to wait to use it for a, another recipe or what functional? Is there something you can do to make use of specifically the leftover LME when you? If you move to all grain, correct. Have yeah. That leftover. yeah, I mean the best the best thing would probably be just to keep it hanging around for starters. Uh, DME and LME, DME especially, but LME works as well uh, for for making starters, and it's like one of the best things that's easy to do that you can really improve your home brewing game at home is making sure your cell counts high enough for your pitch, avoiding having to buy two or three packs of yeast at a time for big boozy beers, um, and and just once that yeast hits. The wart, if it if it has if it's been through a starter, then it's going to hit it rear and ready to go versus just kind of waking up and sluggish to get your fermentation kicked off. So that would be the probably the number one suggestion. The other option would obviously be if you wanted if you have an all grain batch and you wanted to kick up the ABV a little bit without having to add extra grains, or say you're doing the uh, we've got a Bourbon County Barrel Stout clone on our kit, and it's like 27 pounds of grain, so it's a huge grain bill. And if you have your mash ton maxed out, but you, for some reason, still want more alcohol. You can put, put some LME, uh, into the boil. So there's a number of different, a number, a number of different things you can do. Uh, those are probably the two most common things that, that you can, you know, take, still take use of that. LME. Right. Yeah. Right on. We need to that as you were saying it, what an easy, quick video sh- to make showing how to do a starter with DME. Cause like you said, that is like, yeah, that would be a good one. Super and we common. got that, that kitchen or the kitchen in the break room, that that range. We could just do it right there. It would be very quick. Knock one out. Easy. And that because that yeah, you get a lot we, of questions on that. And I don't know if James is still planning on brewing Friday. He's I think he said he wanted to tackle a, a Pilsner, if I'm not mistaken. So um we could even do a video tomorrow making a starter and then have that yeast ready for him to pitch on on Friday if he wanted to brew. That's awesome. I love it. I we'll talk it. to him about it later. We'll talk to him about it. Your your people talk to my people. We'll, <laughs> both our people will talk to James. Uh, David, hope that answered your question. We appreciate you writing in. Great reminder as well, even though in the month of October, all these episodes are technically just brought to you by our Patreon. Uh, I, we are still giving $25 gift cards to KetConnection.com when I take your question on air. So, uh, David, look at your email. I know I sent it to you. Uh, I'm happy to give you your $25 gift card. Moving on to question number two came from our buddy, Zach G, who also used the submission format, homebrewhappyhour.com. Zach wrote, hi, guys. I love the show. I'm an avid listener and watcher on all the platforms. I love all the content you guys produce, and I'm extre- and it's extremely educational. He loves I, the buttering us up is awesome. It works. <laughs> oh, my ego just getting stroked. Uh, He goes on, I especially love the banter back and forth. I've been homebrewing for a few years, and I'm always learning so much from you guys. To Joshua, I'm so happy to hear your daughter is feeling much better. It sounds like she's quite the fighter. I really do appreciate that. Zach, uh, anyway, I've got quite the curveball to throw at you guys, and I hope you can answer it or at least help. Here it is. At my house, I have a small vineyard of French Cabernet grapes, and I was planning on using them to make a beer. 
My plan was to make a West Coast style pale ale, and in fact, I just bought the kit from Keg Connection. I did some research on the internet, and everything I read was pretty vague. What beer style would fit the Cabernet grapes I'm planning on? Would the pale ale style fit so that the flavor from the grapes can still shine through? And one last question, would the grain ratio uh, be the same even though the grapes have a high sugar content? My assumption is I could use the same grain ratios, but I fear the alcohol content will be very high. I'm going to do some trial and error on my end, but I figure you might not get to this question super fast and I want to brew, but I look forward to listening to the information about it in the podcast. I actually did get to it really fast. He just submitted this question and I was like, oh, I'm going to have Joe on the show. I'm going to throw something at him. Joe gets the curveballs. Thank you for your time. And I look forward to listening to more kick-ass content on the show. By the way, I'm a huge fan of Kolsch. So keep on talking about it. He hit every high point for me. <laughs> Holy moly, Zach, I'm going to send you Todd's money. I mean, a $25 gift card to Cat Connection. Todd's money. Um, there's a lot there. So first off, I have zero experience with grapes, with even doing wine. Uh, Cabernet grapes are specifically just for wine, right? Like, I mean, that's their purpose. You don't go plucking them and eating them. Uh, yeah. No, I don't think they're they're – really good for consumption. I, I mean, I may be wrong. I haven't had, I haven't had the pleasure of musting my own grapes from the vine and, and, and making wine or beer with them. I have made a little bit of wine and it's from like the wine expert kits, the boxed kits right. that are like the juice concentrate with the yeast and the, some of the water treatment stuff. Um, and it, it, those are super easy and they turn out really well. Um, I have not ever, I have not ever done grapes in, in a beer either. Um, but it is something that is becoming more and more popular. You start to see it more and more. Um, it's like, there's always been this, uh, huge brewing scene in California. And there's always been this huge like Napa Valley wine scene. And it's like just now, or it's just like, just a, a somewhat recent, like they've started kind of intertwining a right. little bit. Um, and you'll have a lot of, uh, and I think it first started with breweries using wine barrels to like either ferment in or age in, um, and, you know, with some really nice results and um, it's kind of just evolved into actually fermenting with grapes, beer with grapes. Um, and so, yeah, I don't think there's going to be, I don't think you're going to run into any huge issues with, with doing that. Um, but yeah, you, you probably want to try and do some research on like some of the better styles or the more common styles that are currently being introduced with the addition of grapes. Uh, I know, I know Kolsch is actually Kolsch and Blonde, um, or, or two that, you know, again, those are two styles that are just almost like a blank palette. You know, you can really right. do a lot with them and, and have it kind of be the, the feature of the recipe. It's a Kolsch, but it's, you know, brewed with, uh, Cabernet grapes and you're going to really see some darker colors. I think Cabernet is a, a red grape, right? Shh, uh, don't catch me lying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, but I think it's a darker grape. And so you, you may see some kind of reddish purple hues come through on a, on a, not a normal red coals you know so that may be a cool thing to do i've also seen a lot of people that are doing a saison um introducing different varietals of, of wine grapes uh and and that i think that would go pretty well with uh with a saison because you're gonna have some that that just the saison yeast in general a lot of times it provides a, a kind of a fruity with the phenols and the esters that it produces a lot uh you'll get some of that kind of fruity spiciness and which may kind of go good with uh, with the, with some wine grapes, um, the, with the West Coast IPA, that's an interesting one. Or with West Coast Pale, um, you're gonna have a decent amount. I, and I need to go and look at the the Keg Connections West Coast Pale to see the IBUs and stuff. The only thing I could think of maybe a little bit of a clash is like that wine, that grape flavor mixing with the bitterness of the hops. I don't know. It, it may play well together. Um, it may clash a little bit on the palate. I, I don't know enough. I haven't done it, but um, that's why, you know, that's why we're all here to, to try new things and to yeah. uh, kind of pioneer the, our craft. Uh, so I would definitely give it a shot, a shot and see kind of what you get and, and let us know. And, and so we can, um, you know, possibly think about trying some, some right. And, and, and yeah. a couple, and a couple of things too, I think to, to clarify too, you know, with with listeners who may not know some, I think Zach uh, is asking what style would help the grapes shine. Like, I mean, he literally, literally does say that, through, but yeah, yeah. I, not, he's not like, yeah, just because sometimes people uh, are very like Zach isn't necessarily asking how do I stay in a style because he's obviously experimenting and it's right. not like 
yeah, it, technically, if you're going by the Ryan Heinz uh there wouldn't be a Kolsch anymore once you introduce this, right? Well, it but, wouldn't even be a beer at this would, point. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're right. I mean, you're, yeah. No, you're, you're right. T- totally, you're right. But but he's meaning like he wants to do when, – when you're doing different ingredients, there are just certain styles that probably won't help what you're trying to achieve. But again, to be fair, I, I like to speak vaguely and preface everything and suffix everything. We don't know until you try it. Like, uh, I never thought I'd like a jalapeno hellas, and I had one last year, and I was like, holy moly, this is a fantastic beer. Who would have thought to put jalapenos in a hellas? And, yeah. and um, same way. It's like, yeah, it's like a pumpkin IPA. You know, I, it's not something that just sounds like it would be a, appealing, in my opinion, but I've never brewed one. I've never had drank one. So I right. mean, I'm not going to sit here and say, I know I wouldn't like it. You know, it's like, it's hard to say. I would also highly recommend assuming he's not doing it already because he hasn't, he didn't mention it. This would be a perfect time to use a calculator from like a brewer's friend or, or uh, one of homebrewsupply.com. I think it's forward slash homebrew half hyphen calculators uh, to, to like for the part about uh, his grain ratio and, and determining sugar content. Yeah. Do, that, does that Brewers Friend have a grape? Like, can you add that and it calculate it? I don't know because I've n- never tried. They do have fruits. Like when I was helping with some of the matching uh, on the ingredient matching, I noticed that they have like apricot and cherry and different fruits, but I don't know how it attributes like their sugar content. Uh, I think it does have like a lovey bond. Like, so, you know, um, blackberry is going to be darker than apricots, but I don't know how much it really factors in the sugar content. What I would probably, I, and, and another thing with the, doing it, mixing those with the West coast, I would definitely probably try and get them in the fermenter. I wouldn't add them. I wouldn't add that, that must or that juice after fermentation because you're going to end up too sweet. Like that, that sweetness mixed with the pale hoppiness is just, it doesn't, it's not what I would enjoy. Um, I'd like my pale ales fairly dry, if not, extra dry um so uh and i think that's just kind of part of that style so unless you're you know aiming to change this or create a new style or change that style then um i would definitely put them in for fermentation and i I guarantee you'll still get quite a bit of that that grape flavor um but just not as much of the sweetness itself so um even if you bump it up from i don't know what that recipe i should have had that recipe in front of me if it's a five percent pale ale just on average just for example um i can't imagine you know if you impart some grapes i can't imagine it's going to put it over nine percent you know if you bump it up to seven even you know two full percentages up that may be an ipa but it's not going to you know it's not going to be anything that's just unapproachable so right i like that and this might be a great question for the live q a Maybe I'll I'll get Lorena's input only because I guarantee you she has experience with Cabernet grapes to some form. I I've can't or at I, least some knowledge if not. Like that, that's what I mean. Yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. There's like I, I when we were at HomebrewCon, I think I was just being silly and and I forgot what we were talking about ferment and she goes, yeah I, yeah I fermented that and here's the really I was like oh, <laughs> yeah oh my gosh I wish totally. I, I wish we didn't have to work the booth because I would have loved to go to her. I say I would have loved to. It was wasn't her talk the day after club night. In the early morning, was, and they were tasting was. all the different fermented stuff that she brought, eating and, eating and drinking all the fermented. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't and know if I'd want yogurt and that stuff. It all, yeah. it all. She said it got wiped up real quick, and I that was like, well, it's because everybody's feeling it from last night at Club Night. They come in there and get something in their belly. <laughs> get that kimchi, sauerkraut, kombucha, just whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Protein can't, shake. Yeah, protein shake can't be any worse. <laughs> Zach, thank you so much for submitting your question. Yeah, that's a great question, Zach. And if we if we do uh, start experimenting with some of that stuff here at some point, we will be sure to either publish an article or mention it in a pod, bring it up in a podcast or something. Um, I, I like that question. I like the idea and the the kind of progress that that we that our country, you know, America especially has made with some of that style of of, of blending grapes mm-hmm. with malts, and um, I'm excited to see how that kind of progresses. So it is cool because worst case, it'll be like, well, it didn't work that great with this one, and what what else can I try it with? Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, or I say that my worst case would be I, I, you know, hate it and I never drink it again. But that's not a bad worst day. You know, another thing, Zach, why we're still kind of on that topic, what you could do uh, if, if, you know, if, if you were, if you're scared of like possibly ruining the whole batch by 
doing something wrong or adding it at, at the wrong time or too much or too little, you could separate out like a gallon of it and ferment it in like a separate little, like a two gallon jug or like a, a, a big mason jar and just add a small amount to kind of see how it turns out. And then, you know, if it turns out wonderful, then you can kind of use that ratio and brew the batch again or, yeah. uh, you know, and then kind of do it with the whole batch. So you don't necessarily turn out with something that you're not happy with and just it sits in your kegerator for, you know, a month yeah, or, for a month, or however yeah. long. Yeah. God forbid you pour it. But yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you're right. Because it is scalable. I mean, sure. in, in theory, if you, you make and it work it's with like your, it's your own. It's your own you know, vineyard, your own personal vineyard. You, you can pick however much you want and not necessarily have to buy a big bag of grape, Cabernet grape puree or, or, or juice, concentrated grape juice, and then only use a bit of it and have to dump the rest. So. Exactly. So yes, thank you for submitting the question. Joe, again, my friend, I can't thank you enough for your time, for doing the show. I think I small talked you to death, but I appreciate how you're oh, such a good sport yeah, about it. That's part of the part of the show, man. <laughs> I appreciate it. Part, yeah. And man, I'm I'll I'll see you soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. Okay. Sounds good. We'll see you tomorrow, man. Likewise. And that will do it for this episode of the Homebrew Happy Hour. If you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on the submit a question link at the top of the page. Or now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. Remember that ultimately this show is made possible by people like you. Consider joining our Patreon community by visiting patreon.com forward slash homebrewhappyhour and see the cool perks we have for the community. On behalf of Lada Joe Ermis and the Pearl Media Network, I'm Joshua Steubing. Thank you for listening. This program is made possible by the checkbook of Mr. Todd Burns and by contributions to our newly launched Patreon by viewers like you. Visit patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour and join our community. Thank you.